Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the World of Insafi podcast. It has been quite a while since we've done an episode, but it seems fitting because we're joined here today with our good friend Kenton Claremont, and you know he's got some big uh, news and exciting things going on in his life with uh, Train to Hunt that I think we're going to have fun digging into today. But uh, more than that, just fun to catch up. It's It's been quite a while. Kenton, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm good. Good. Thanks for having me on. It's It has been a while. I was about two and a half years to be exact. Um, and hey, man, it's just good to be back and it's good to be, you know, catch up with you guys and catch up with old friends. And that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to the most is just these last two and a half years have been, you know, put everybody's life on pause or at least the vast majority of us on pause. And so it's great to be able to connect with old friends and, you know, get back to business as usual. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And before I forgot to mention too, Chris, Chris Denham's here. I don't if, for those who are not watching this, like you're listening in is Chris, me and uh, Kenton here. Um, but yeah, I, I fully agree. Kenton, it's been wild. Like when you said two and a half years, it kind of, it's hard to wrap my mind around it because it surely, it doesn't seem that way, but time just entered into some sort of weird warp zone when that whole pandemic thing kicked off. Cause like you just became disconnected with certain friends and colleagues and and just people and it, it just yeah time slowed down and sped up all at the same time it was weird yeah, yeah the timing that like, the, the timing back then too i mean i feel like train to hunt was got like got caught up in the epicenter of it because of the timing you know it, it looked like you know in in january february when everything started getting weird you're like okay we got a couple of weeks you know flatten the curve everything you know everything's gonna be fine you know and then it just kept dragging on and on and on. And I still remember when you had to cancel the first event, I was like, this is crazy. I can't yeah. believe we have to do this, but surely we'll be ready for nationals. Arizona is still going to happen. All the events are, yeah. still, you know, yeah, we're going to lose one or two. And then it just kept dragging on and on and on. And before you knew it, you know, you're having to, you know, cancel nationals and cancel an entire season, which for those of us who are participants and love to participate, it was depressing. It was, it was a serious bummer. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, man, it was, it was just a really tough pill for me to swallow. You know, that's how I was supporting my family was these events and this business. And um, once that I found out about the events being canceled, um, it was a really big eye opener for me. And um, I, I questioned like, how long this was going to go on and what I was going to be able to do to, you know, support my family. And luckily, you know, I got a job uh, as a high school principal at a, at a private school, which it, the timing couldn't have been any better. Um, I just, once I found out, it was like, I, I got to do something. And I, so I acted fast and I got a job as a high school principal at a private school in North Idaho, just happened to be my old hometown where my dad lived. And so the last two and a half years, the reason I know exactly how long it's been is because uh, I know, I had to spend four days a week away from my family for the last two and a half years working, yeah. you know, at, at a, at a distance. And so even 2021, it, you know, you guys remember, it was just, it was so, you know, every state was a little different and the, the, the news that was coming out was um, seemed to be like on a daily changing. It was just such a moving target that, in or for me to go through all the logistics to set up events just to have them canceled again was just really just too much for me to really try to wrap my head around. Um, so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to write 2021 off as well. Um, and I'll hope for 2022 and lo and behold, here we are, <laughs> yeah. you know, thank the good Lord. We're at, we're out of the, the dark side and uh, we're, you know, it's time to start, getting people together and doing train to hunt challenges and working out and getting groups together. And I'm just really excited that we're where we are, where we are. And, um, I'm just, you know, feeling really grateful to be where to be reopening train to hunt and getting things going again. Yeah. Yeah. So too. Tim, let's, let's uh, talk a little bit about, cause I mean, train to hunt's been around for like, it was kind of the first, you know, bow hunting, uh, physical fitness competitive event out there. There's mm -hmm. several others now. And, you know, this, this whole industry we're in, there's so many new people coming into it every day. I'm sure we're going to have some people who aren't really familiar with what exactly train to hunt is, especially because it's gone through some ebbs and flows over the years as to being more, you know, online based. And then there's event based stuff. So 
just give us a little bit of a history as to, you know, what Train to Hunt started as and, and, and was and now is today. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, in 2008, Dan Staten and I opened up at CrossFit um, back when people were still calling it uh, Crossfire. <laughs> they had no idea what it was. <laughs> and uh, we opened one of those up and, and we were training people, you know, CrossFit style. And we, both of us were just so competitive and, and uh, such hard charging that we just kind of found our new thing. And um, we were training different than most people come, you know, June, July, August and decided that athlete like specifically because hunting is just like you know any other sport and that it um it, it pays off it pays you know high dividends to be to train specifically for the movements that you're gonna face in the mountains which is you know weight on your back over steep terrain the intensity changes the uh, duration is much longer than anything that you can afford to give people in a gym. Um, and so we decided to open up train to hunt as a fitness, a way of just like training the, the hunting athletes specifically. And in 2012, um, 2012, we kicked off the train to hunt challenge. And this was just an attempt to get people to really have something to focus on year round because people would fall off after hunting season and the excuse was, well, hunting season is so far away that I don't really have anything, you know, short term to train for. So the train to hunt challenge was, was just kind of born. And it really was just for a testing ground for people's fitness regimens. Like how, how is what you're doing preparing you to go out on a hunt? So we started the train to hunt challenge in 2012 and it's just a series of movements that are, that you'll face in the, in the mountains, which is, a lot of box step ups. We have you lift dead weight in the form of a sandbag. We have you do burpees, moving your body through the largest range of motion possible. We have you do get ups, which is simulating lots of things, but um, you know, get standing up in your pack is one of them, and just moving moving your body through a full range of motion using dead weight and and boxes, and then shooting while under duress. And really, if you put any kind of competition behind any shooting or any movement um there's a chance that you're unless you've been really practicing that that uh, movement or your technique or your shot routine um you're going to find holes in it so yeah. it's you know it's a, it's a run and shoot it's a it's a train and shoot it's like an obstacle course a little bit in in that respect and then but you're shooting your bow along the way and then uh, the last test is you put some weight on your back. It's not ridiculous anymore. <laughs> it yeah. used to be. Uh, and uh, you put weight on your back and you move through a one to two mile course through, you know, some pretty decent terrain um, and shoot a couple targets along the way just to simulate having to really hustle with, with weight on your back and uh, make these shots on the fly and be able to like calm your heart rate, and get through your shot routine and make an app shot yeah um and then the last portion of the train to hunt challenge is actually a hunter's 3d course which is it's if any of you have ever shot a 3d course it's very similar to that it's just you're, you know you're you're going from target to target the only difference being that at each target you're challenged in some way shape or form and we try to simulate any kind some kind of challenge you might face in the field uh the smallest maybe being a no range finder for that situation where you don't have the time to to range find it a second time after you maybe have gone through your range finder drawn back and then it moves a certain you know a certain distance and you're not able to like you don't want to just you know let down your bow and re-range find it and then draw it back you're just having to guess a little bit yeah. all the way to you know a 30 second hold you have you know your two arrows in 10 seconds which is called the follow-up shot your kneeling shot your draw kneeling stand shoot your draw move left to right shoot it's a it's a good course it's just again everything that the train on challenge um, does is supposed to help you you know prepare for uh, the hunting uh yeah. hunting experience so it's great yeah definitely an eye-opening type of event i think for like for the individual you know that, that's the one the first time i competed i've actually only i think competed in one i've been to you know my fair share but i think i've only competed in one and that was what I felt like I got the most out of it was I saw all the holes in my game and just, you know, I thought I was fairly in shape in certain ways. And, um, 
you know, clearly found like found out pretty quickly that no, like there was just not that same level of, uh, you know, conditioning that I thought was there. Um, maybe we're having a little technical difficulties here, but people understand we're remote. It's just the nature of the world. So if we're cutting in and out, that's just what's going on. Kenton lives in a pretty remote part of Idaho. So service isn't always great and we're all in different places. So. Yeah. The one thing that uh, I always, it was interesting. And for anybody who's not actually competed in an event, it, it sounds a little intimidating up front, but the one thing that I was always impressed with is the guys that shot the best generally won. Mm-hmm. So even though you, everybody, cause pretty much everybody shows up in pretty decent shape. I mean, it's, it, you, you can't, you can't certainly be just, uh, you know, 50 pounds overweight in the couch. Pit. You can still do it. You're just going to be a little on the slow side there. But even those guys, if they show up and they're a really good archer, they're probably going to score pretty well, which that's what it's all about. It's about putting the arrow where it belongs. Um, so I've always appreciated that about trying to hunt that it, it didn't overemphasize uh, the physical aspect over the archery aspect. I mean, you still have to be able to put an arrow on a target no matter what. And you can be the world's fastest. And we've had some guys, you know, won't name names over the years, that are physical beasts. <laughs> and they don't win. Uh-huh. You know, you just look at him and go, oh, that guy's going to win. He's not nope. even in the top three, you know, and, and it's because yep. he couldn't put an arrow on target like he needed to. Yeah, as they say, you can't outrun bad shooting. No. You, yeah. you just can't no. make it up. You just can't no. make it up. You're not going to be fast enough so- I mean, wouldn't you, and it, wouldn't you agree, Kenton? It seems like one of the biggest separators with competitors and just, you know, archers in general is how well you can shoot, not when you're completely composed and your toes are on the line, but when your heart rate's a little bit jacked, that seems to be where even like the really good archers, if they haven't really practiced it, fall apart. Absolutely. It, absolutely. That's, it's well said. You know, those guys that you take to the 3D courses and they just... You know, they're shooting, they just tear up a 3D course, but then you yeah. take them hunting and they can't hit the broad side of a barn. Yeah. Those yeah. are the guys that um, find out like what you have to be good under certain circumstances in order to be successful in, a, in the hunting field, right? Like mm-hmm. you can be a great archer, but unless you can shoot under specific circumstances, um, you're never going to, you're not going to harvest those tags. And then, you know, the flip side of that coin is, you know, there's guys that go out and they shoot eights all day. Um, and on a 3d competition, they may not do so well, but, um, in a honey in the field, they're killing elk every single year. Now I understand it's not just their fitness level. It's also their ability to scout and then their, you know, their ability to, you know, move through terrain and watch the wind and all kinds of stuff. But that, those are the kind of guys you're talking about. They have yeah. to be able to shoot under, in certain circumstances or else you're just not going to be successful and trying to hunt actually is a perfect test of that. Yeah. I, I feel like I've noticed something lately, uh, just, you know, being on Instagram and seeing everyone's posts when they're out at archery shoots and everyone's going to the range. And it's like, there's this, like guys love to just get geared up to go to the archery range. I mean, they've got their range finder, they've got their chest harness on and they've got their knives that are connected to their stuff and like the full regalia to go to the archery range and like i fully like support that just so you like you're used to drawing back you're used to make executing a shot with your full chest rig on i think the one thing though that would probably benefit more is just shooting with that elevated heart rate because i've never been able to draw my bow back at an animal or even get within 50 yards of an animal and keep my heart rate but like at a reasonable level like i just always get excited and there's just even that excitement level that I mean, sometimes the best way to simulate that is just do 20 burpees first and just get that heart rate up and see how steady you are. But it's like, you know, I think the second part to that whole practice, how you play is practice with a heart rate, which is like, that was it's such a game changer when you do that. Absolutely, Kevin. And like you just mentioned, when that, when you know, that it's going to happen. And we know what we're, you know, you know what I'm talking about when you're in a position where those closing moments are happening, here it comes. I need arrows knocked. I'm going to draw my bow. And you realize like, this is going to happen. Most people, their heart rates jump up and you have to be able to talk yourself through your shot routine, you know, your ability to calm yourself down, talk yourself through it, be able to draw and then, you know, get off a real good arrow and, the only way to get your heart rate up is to is through exercise. You know, there's no other way to do it other than maybe if 
you could somehow figure out some way for somebody to come up and scare the crap out of you. And then you have to shoot in like 10 seconds, but like, yeah, yeah. that's, that's unrealistic, you know? So for that's sure. the best, that's the best way to simulate it is do 20 burpees, get up, take some deep breaths, talk yourself into calming your heart rate down as you're loading up, take a, take a deep breath, hold it and start pulling, start pulling, start pulling until it goes off. That's, that's the only way to do it. And as far as I know, you know, train to hunt, was the definitely the first and uh you know like you mentioned there's other there's other competitions out there but it's a it's a really good way to practice practice psychic play yeah yeah there was uh i mean chris is fully aware I, we used to go to the train to hunt com competitions i remember when i first started working for wilderness athletes shortly thereafter we went to train to hunt nationals in colorado and i think it was up near I don't know. Eagle Lake for some reason sounds familiar to me. I can't remember exactly where it was in Colorado, mm -hmm. but it was such a uh, like magnetic event. There was just so many people there, like so many friends and family of the competitors. And there was just so much cool atmosphere around. Um, and I think there was just like a general understanding that everyone, you know, everyone's going to suffer today. You know, it's, it's going to be shit. We're at 9,000 feet elevation or whatever we were where there's, there's burpees, sandbags, heavy packs, miles, all this stuff. And, you know, honestly, nowhere to hide, you know, you're kind of exposed. And there was just, it kind of built that like fraternity feeling of, of everybody's in the same boat. Um, and, you know, it, that, that's, I think one of the most, not, not tragic is kind of dramatic things to see happen after this whole pandemic is just people have kind of fallen a little bit further apart. Um, things are getting better now with archery shoots, but you know, I'm guessing you're that, that's one of the goals, Kenton, right? Is to get that that momentum, that energy back into train to hunt with uh launching it this year, right? Absolutely. That's the that is the only reason. Honestly, the only reason is to get these people back together and get more people to join us. Because as I've said a hundred times, like it can be a very lonely world to be like this hard charging, really fitness conscious bow hunter that it seems to go through you know, workout partner after workout partner after hunting buddy that just seemingly have no interest in really being as hard charging as you are. And you start to think that maybe there's nobody out there like that. And when you go to these events, you find out that there is a lot of people out there mm -hmm. like that. And a lot of people at different fitness levels, but they all have the same mindset, Kevin. And mm -hmm. that's the most beautiful part about the train to hunt challenge. And I think if you ask anybody who's ever done one, they would say the thing that stands out the most is the camaraderie is the people sure. they meet and the friendships formed and the realization that, you know what, that there's a whole community of us out here. And, you know, Chris, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. It's like, it's to me, it's just the, uh, the thing I loved about trained hunt. It, it's to some degree, you know, for people that are into CrossFit and you go to the CrossFit gym where everybody's rooting for you, you know, to, to finish, finish strong at, at a train to hunt event, there is nobody looking around going, I hope that guy misses that target. I hope that guy misses that target. I hope that guy falls down. You know, <laughs> nobody, everybody's just cheering you on. You make yeah. a good shot, everybody, even your biggest competitor, hey, nice shot, good shot. If, it, you know, if he can breathe, <laughs> you know, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. half the time, you don't even know it's a blur. You don't know what's actually going on. But yeah, the camaraderie, <laughs> that's cool. When I, when I go to the trade shows and I'll see somebody and like, I have no idea what their name is because I'm terrible with names, but I'm like, you're a trained to hunt guy, you know, yeah. or, or, you know, and, and they're, you know, not just guys, it's, you know, probably what, 20, 25% women. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That, that camaraderie that comes out of, of trained to hunt and is, is phenomenal. It's, it's the thing I've missed the very most, you know, it's, yeah. uh, you suffer together, you just, it creates a bond. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's just things that I look, uh, when train to hunt first kind of got started in Arizona, me and a group of guys, Kevin and a bunch of us started at what our, our own league. Um, and we were doing train to hunt type training every Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember what day of the week it was. Tuesdays. And Tuesdays. Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, but the cool thing that I was looking at this year is when you look at the long-term effects of what you've done, Kevin, is that group of guys, we decided, Hey, you know, cause we would do, we would do the, the, our workout starting in about May. And then when hunting season started, we, you know, we quit for the season. So we said, Hey, we got to get everybody together. So we started doing a javelina hunt in February and 
you know, just, just the guy, just pretty much the guys from the league started, but then they'd invite some friends. Um, and we're still doing that this year. We probably had Kevin, like 30, 35 yeah. guys yeah. You know, that all get together and go have a lane of hunting and just have an absolute ball. And yeah. that, that group of people exists because trained to hunt happened. You know, yeah, you look sure. at those downstream effects of, of what you've yeah. done and what trained to hunt accomplished. Yeah. You know, I looked at, it, I was like, I almost called you from camp one night and I was like, no, it's like 11 o'clock. I probably shouldn't call him, <laughs> but and just put you, put you on speakerphone and say, thanks, you know, for doing what you did, because it's just, a, it's, it's, we, it's just the event I look forward to almost as much as any hunt I go on. I can't wait to go on that dog on have a lean hunt, just have a ball, you know, with those guys again. Heck yeah. Yeah, Chris, that's, that's great. And gosh, I just love, I love those stories. They really make my day because that's really what, what I envision trained to hunt being able to do, you know, mm -hmm. it's it. And it's done it for so many people. I've heard that story a few times. Like I went to Scott Carr's workout last week and he had, you know, four or five guys there. He said, man, we've had up to 15 guys here. And he's like, this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for trained to hunt. We all met each other at a trained to hunt through trained to hunt, you know? And so those, those long-term effects, those long-term friendships, I know that there's, you know, guys that, to this day have been hunting together for like five or six years and they met at a train to hunt. Yeah. And, um, I love that. I love that. And to your guys' point about the camaraderie, one of the stories I'd love to tell is that the story, I think it might've been the Colorado nationals or the qualifier, Kevin, I'm not exactly sure, but there was a, there was a guy, this is just kind of proof that like, it doesn't matter what your fitness level is. In fact, people are rooting maybe harder for the guy who for is sure. just like bucked up and came out. And there was a, there was a guy who had kind of fallen behind and was taking a long time on the, on the meat pack and every competitor and spectator lined up at the finish line, you yeah. know, for maybe 200 yards. And as soon as this guy came into view, everybody was cheering for him and yelling at him and telling him, keep going, buddy, you got this. And, and I remember that brought a tear to my eye. I mean, it still makes me choke up to think yeah. how it's just a beautiful moment in, in just life and events and the train to hunt. That's what train to hunt brings out in people is their, this uh, camaraderie and this support system and the, the people standing at the finish line, taking your pack off and giving you water and making mm -hmm. sure you're okay. And it's not, competition it's not like this cutthroat competition it's more like hey we're all going to do this competition and in the end we're going to be we're going to have a real connection so it's it's something i'm really looking forward to um continuing and i want to get more people involved and um get more just more of that because yeah. that's what i miss the most and i think that's what everybody else misses the most so that's what um, that's what it seems for me like what train to hunt taps into for a lot of guys is like it's like a great opportunity to compete when you maybe haven't really competed since, since you were like a high school football player yeah. or whatever it is. And, and competition doesn't always just mean red blooded, like in your face, you know, of course there's some of that, but like <laughs> it's, there's always that like, you know, camaraderie and support system. Um, you know, you see it at CrossFit gyms, you see it at a bunch of gyms now, just, you know, find a way to make it competitive and really go head to head with either somebody else or testing yourself. And I think it brings out, something that you don't normally get to tap into unless you're you know you're putting yourself in that position absolutely absolutely and it's so, a good time for it really people are tired of being cooped up and they want to get outside and yeah. they want to exercise and compete outside and it's a really good time to come back it's a good time for you know for the events to come back and and be up again and we're going to throw one in oregon on july 30th and 31st of this year and we want everybody that can make it to make it i understand that you know historically this is a little bit late in the game and bear season's right around the corner and there's some sheep hunting to be done and there's some elk scout to be done but it would be great to get as many people out there as we can just uh you know get the family back together and yeah, just look yeah. each other in the eye and throw down and you know just hang out so the other thing that uh, is new, and you mentioned it in the intro, Kevin, is that 
it building up to this. That's one of the things I really want to emphasize because the, the challenge, like people know you, even you guys really know train to hunt as the train to hunt challenge. That's what it is. Like people don't think of train to hunt as anything other than maybe the, the, the challenges, but really what I want to do is really try to push a little bit more towards this 365 training regiment that we can provide um, we have subscriptions that you can get on on a daily workout and what I call it is the daily workout group because everybody who gets a subscription, no matter what level of subscription you're getting, you get access to this daily workout group where I provide a daily workout and you guys can do it. And then you get to comment and it's a good way to be, you know, connected with a group of people and have some accountability and um, those that's going to be a really fun group. We also are doing the online challenges now, which are, you can get an online challenge subscription for 1095 a month, which is, you know, really, um, really fun for people to be able to do every month. Look, uh, it's kind of like the CrossFit open, right? You like look yeah, at yeah. it and go, I wonder what the workout's going to be, you know, this, this week or this month or wonder what, tw- you know, whatever it's going to be. Um, yeah, I just, that's before, what- before we did this, I went on the website and uh, put my email address in and it sent me the four, it was the four week free workouts which yeah. I thought was pretty freaking cool. Like there was, I was just kind of reading through them pretty quick and they all seem like pretty doable at home things too. Right. Yeah. And that's, that was the, that's the whole, well, that's kind of philosophy, the philosophy of train to hunt just in general is that we want to try to make it a minimal minimalist, something you can just grab your, grab your pack and, a, and maybe a box and a target and your bow and go step in your backyard and be able to get in shape for hunting. You know? Yeah. The, is there some benefit to throwing some barbells around? Absolutely. But yeah. is it absolutely necessary? No, it's not. Nature doesn't have barbells. I mean, if you have a sandbag, if you have a rock, if you have something that you can use as weight, um, use that. Um, so we have the online challenges that you can do right at your house. They're really quick. They're simple. Like this, uh, June's, tra- uh, June's online challenge is 10 over the, over the sandbag burpees and one shot at 20 yards, three rounds. Um, the, right now the leader is a minute 23 seconds which is really fast but like you're anywhere between a minute 23 seconds and three minutes and you're done but it, 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 it throws your name in a hat for some prizes and then if you win your division then you also win some prizes as well and i tried to make it as many divisions as i could we have all the train to hunt challenge divisions which is 18 and over 40 and over 50 and over and 60 and over for men and women. But then I threw in some teen, a teen division. I also threw in the 10 and under because heck my nine-year-old can do it. Then everybody's nine-year-old can do it. So, you know, just, just, just bring that target up a little bit so they can, they can actually hit it and (laughs) have them do the competition and submit their video and boom, you know, they're in the drawing. So, or they're in the running. So it's fun. It's something that's going to keep people every month every month, September, October, November, every month, we're going to do an online challenge. And I'm hoping that that kind of brings some camaraderie to people as well. And then the, the big picture on that idea was that if we can get enough people competing on the online challenges, then when we meet live, people will be able to like, yo, you're the guy, yeah, you know, yeah. like if, uh, you know, Earl gets on there and, w- yeah, and wins like six months in a row, and they finally someone goes get to meet him. They're going to be like, okay, this makes sense. Like this guy's not lying. He's legit, yeah, right. you know? <laughs> so, yeah. um, we got the so, online challenges. We got the subscriptions. We have the live challenges. Um, and then we got some new merchandise. It's, you know, just like most people, they have merchandise that they're, they're throwing right. out there. So, yeah, well, I think it's great that you're getting it going now. Like, obviously this is the time of year where, you know, you have every hunter's attention more or less, you know, guys are getting ready for, their season, they're figuring out what tags are drawn. Um, this, I think, at this stage in the game, if you haven't, if you haven't really prioritized your fitness and how you're prepared mentally and physically, then you know you're missing more than half of the whole um, opportunity as to like you know what you can actually do with these hunts. Um, mm-hmm. So, are you when it comes to the uh, the video portion, or not the video portion, but like the the competitive stuff? Are you going to be making videos to show like? the standards of the workouts kind of like, you know, like the online uh, CrossFit open style workouts. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to the online, if you go to the, the website and go to the online challenge and it says view d- details, mm-hmm. you'll go there and you'll see a video of me explaining in detail, the standards. And then there's a, the standards of each month, they will have a new video out. And then there's just a, like a, a video that will stay there the whole time and it, it, it explains exactly how to film each challenge. 
um, you know, how to set up your phone or if you're having somebody film you, like how to film it. And it's real simple. It's just yeah. a matter of like getting in a position so that you can see you doing the movements in full range of motion. And then you stand up, turn around, shoot the target. The target has to be in the picture downrange. It doesn't have to be in focus, but it's just downrange. So yeah, yeah. there's, there's videos explaining the standards, cool. the movements, all of it. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of us in the CrossFit world are kind of used to that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, those guys are the gold standard. They, I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're doing that for millions of people, you know? So if they're doing it, uh, if they're doing it that way, then that's the way we ought to be doing it. And not that we have that kind of a quality, but I've, for, I'm familiar enough with the CrossFit world and the CrossFit uh, style of delivering standards that I'm, I'm able to be able to, I'm able yeah. to do that. So for sure. Yeah. When Kevin told me about, when Kevin told me about doing the online thing, I was like, duh. I'm like, uh, why, why yeah. it just, how that never crossed my mind until he said that I'm like, that's perfect. Cause it's now there's literally no limitations. Anybody at any part of the, the entire world can join. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. It's just, that's super exciting. I, 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 I'm almost embarrassed for myself that I never crossed my mind. You know, it <laughs> me seems too, Chris. Serious, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Have. It's, the one, maybe it's the one thing that came out of the pandemic that I was like, you know what, this is, this is, uh, this might be the one thing that came out of the pandemic that I thought, you know what, people are doing online things. Let's do right. an online thing ourselves. Yeah. So. Right. Well, and it's kind of, it's kind of trained people a bit to, I think there's so many people now that like, because of what they were faced with during that time, they started working out at home and now they almost just prefer it. Like how many home gyms were probably built and, <laughs> you know, just kind of, you build that into your routine and, that's just how you prefer to get it done, especially when you have kids or <clears throat> you work from home. Um, I think it's just another great accessory. Like you said, this first one between a minute and a half and three minutes, you know, it's it, people should be able to get that done. Yeah. My nine-year-old did it in like uh, just over three minutes. Yeah. So there's no reason anybody, unless I, mean, I guess the only thing that would limit you is if you can't do a burpee for some reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was your time? What was it? Uh, mine was 224. 224. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what happens. It's 10 burpees over the bar, right? Is that what you said? Or over, uh, like over a sandbag over or sandbag. your back. Okay. And then so, one yep. shot at the end of each round for three rounds. For three rounds. That's it. Okay. Oof. Fast as you can. Yeah. Sometimes like those, you know, you know how like you go to a gym and you see like what the workout that's written on the board and it's like non-threatening, but those are the ones you got to be worried about the most because like there's really no like room for air and it's just balls of the wall and that's yeah. usually the one that hurts the most it's the dreaded fran <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> like no yeah, yeah. so what uh, yeah. what else do you guys have kind of up your sleeve or i mean i'm sure a lot of this is kind of you're going to wait and see how this is maybe mm -hmm. carrying out in the beginning but what's your vision for what we'll see at a train to hunt for the next uh, the remainder of 2022 and then in 2023 do you want to have so, like, a full schedule of events or what are you thinking so in 2022, we'll just do the one event because then we're rubbing it into hunt season and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do 2022. We'll just do the July 30th and 31st in Oregon. And then come 2023, we're going to have at least four. And one, so my thoughts are right now, my thoughts are, and this isn't anything in stone, but it's uh, Oregon, Arizona, Colorado, and then one other state, I'm not exactly sure, maybe Montana. I'd love to get over to Bozeman and get that whole, like that whole Bozeman community fired up about a train to hunt challenge because there's so many bow hunting, so many bow hunters and bow hunting companies and bow hunting mentality over in that area. Um, near Bozeman, somewhere in Montana, there's a lot, but definitely Arizona, definitely Oregon, and definitely Colorado. Um, but the, a fourth is to be seen. But I don't, Kevin, I'm never going to do the whole, the full, tour again that was just it was too hit and miss like when you do something for 10 years yeah. and um you kind of you kind of learn the hard way that that your time it's you need to put your your effort into into things that are the most productive and traveling to new sites every year just wasn't really the most productive thing for me but doesn't it doesn't mean it's off the you know that i'll never do it it just means that in 2023 my plan is just to do four big events um yeah. and hopefully we can get a pile of people to those four events yeah um, other yeah. than that like 
what's the uh, what's the plan? We got lots of things that could happen. Uh, the one thing that is going to happen is we're going to be. Sorry, there's an airplane going over. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> we're 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 like we're like ten miles from uh, Fairchild Air Force Base, so oh, we have great. planes flying over quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get the loud ones. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's lots of things that could happen, but we are going to be at the Rogue Invitational. We're going to be set up there at the Rogue Invitational and trying nice. to tap into the the CrossFit community world we're in uh, talks right now with rogue to see if uh, we might be able to cut to partner with them to come up and design some new challenges for the challenge course um Very the cool. online stuff yeah the online stuff we're really going to try to push the uh, online challenges and make the live events just a really huge family community gathering um and try to just get more people involved and right now my focus is to try to get the uh, train to hunt brand and the train to hunt challenge and the train to hunt way of living in front of as many people as I can, because I've never met anybody who found out about it. It was like, that's, that's, that's not a good idea or that doesn't <laughs> sound fun at all. You know, everybody that's ever done it or seen it was, is always been, that's a really cool idea. That sounds really fun. So oh, yeah. my, my focus now is just to get, get the word out, sure. get the word out for sure. Yeah, I think I mean, we're going to do everything we can to to do that as well, because it's obviously it's so um, it's it's so like closely linked to like this mm-hmm. lifestyle that wilderness athlete, and even Western hunter, uh, mm-hmm. you know, promotes to an, to a degree is is your level of physical fitness, your mental preparedness, <clears throat> all of that translates to the what type of experience you have in the outdoors. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe you're not able to punch tag. But if you enjoy yourself and you're able to experience more and, and have more fun, what you're doing out there, because you're suffering less, that's really what this is all about, too. So, yeah, I'm, we're definitely on board to be a part of that. And, and we got to talk to after after this call a little bit more about the rogue stuff. We've got some interesting things in the works, potentially, that we might be able to collaborate on, too, with rogue. Oh, right on. Right on. As a testament to get, Kevin saying it, it, how applicable it is to Western Hunter. I think I can I've told you this story. We may have even done one of your old podcasts, but when back in, so this is what, like five years ago. So like 17, 16, 17, somewhere in that 2016, 2017, I was 55 and, and I was like, my, my goal was to make the podium at nationals. I was like, you know what, this, I'm not getting any younger. This is before you had the 60 year old category. So I was like, this yeah. is it. You know, it's like every year <laughs> my competition gets younger and I get older. And I was like, you know what? I am going to bust my tail this summer to try to make a podium at, at train to hunt nationals. So I had my sandbag set up and I'm in my neighbors thought I was just nuts. You know, I'm lugging around a 60 pound sandbag over my shoulder and shooting in my backyard and just, you know, just training five days a week, just every, well, and that was when you had the online uh, workouts too, you know, the warrior and the, all the different uh, workouts. And I was doing those. And then, so it was about, gosh, it was early July. I got a call from Mike Duplan, one of my field editors saying, Hey, I got an opportunity to do a two on one doll sheep hunt. If you want to go. And I was like, I looked at the dates and they were right on top of the nationals. I'm like, okay, well, and then I'm looking at, and then we started talking more and more about the sheep hunt. And it was at the Tonsina walk-in area of Alaska which is known to be literally like the most physical you can, you can, there's no helicopters, no, no livestock, no airplanes. You got to pack it all in. You got to do everything yourself. You got some horrendous there. Your first day is brutal just to try to <clears throat> crash this one butte. And uh, I talked to a couple of friends of mine that have been there and they're like, dude, I, you know, nothing against you, but man, this is a, this is like the hardest sheep hunt you can physically possibly ever do. And I was like, they had me scared. Anyways, I went, did the hunt, did, you know, did really well physically. I just, you know, I killed a ram and it was one of the, saw the episode on Western hunter TV, but I was able to do that because of training for train to hunt. I mean, it's how it is. There is a direct correlation to your success in the field. You know I mean? There is no way, literally, there is no doubt in my mind. If, if it wasn't for training to hunt and what I was doing, that I would have even made it over that first mountain because it, it was brutal. It was like going to nationals on day one, you know, (laughs) and you you get yourself beat to death. It just felt like, but you know, I finished it and it was like, I still think is one of my biggest accomplishments. The one I'm like kind of the most proud of is just being able to 
go and physically handle that hunt. And it's because of trained to hunt. That's such a, that's such a cool story. And it's exactly what we aim to do. And exactly. you were training for train to hunt this, you right. know what, in your head, this is what I'm training for. Cause I want to go and I want to podium and I want to do well. And I know exactly how to do that. I know what I need to do. And then when you get sidetracked with a sheep hunt, yeah, it's hard to feel sorry yeah. for you, but <laughs> yeah, no, I know exactly. I didn't, I still have never made, I never did make the podium at nationals, but I got a tall sheep on the wall. So. <laughs> I, I, I think you're winning. I think you're yeah. winning. Uh, yeah. And to get sidetracked and be able to just like seamlessly step into that environment and, and have the success you had is exactly what train to hunt is about. And that's exactly what everybody could, could experience if they give the workouts a, a try, because that's yeah. exactly what uh, they're designed for. So, and you know, Phil, I remember Phil Mendoza is the same thing. He had some sheep, that he drew in one year and he was like a two-time national champ. And he said, I don't think I can make it to nationals this year because I have my sheep. And I was like, Phil, buddy, this is why we do this. Like go yeah. on your sheep. Hunt. And he went and killed that Ram. And so it's, I remember that year. yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know. There's just so many good memories like that. And I'm glad that you told that story, Chris, cause that's exactly the type of stories that people need to need to hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure. No, that's huge. I think there's there's also a lot to be gained from the events. You know, I think there's a so many people out there, young men and women who are who are kind of looking for that catalyst and change. Like they mm -hmm. just they they're just they're, you feel kind of you feel kind of stuck. Maybe you're just not satisfied with what you know what you're accomplishing in the gym or your social life or even just in the field. Um, and that's what trained to hunt really kind of when I think about it was the catalyst for me. It got me into CrossFit. Like I had never stepped into mm -hmm. CrossFit once. And I did the Arizona uh, challenge in 2016. And uh, it just, it killed me. It was just so freaking hard. I mean, it was back when we were doing the 100 pound. That was actually the one part that I felt okay about was the 100 pound, you know, uh, meat pack. <laughs> meat pack. Yeah. But the rest of it, you know, was just, it was such a fire, like a lung burner and really just exposed, you know, what I was, what I was lacking. And um, I remember Matt and Ment was at that, at that event and him and I, you know, already kind of knew each other just loosely from, from work and just the community. He dragged me out to my first CrossFit workout somewhere in Scottsdale. I dropped in at a gym with him first time ever. And I had, you know, going into it, thought I was somewhat in shape, you know, just doing the typical meathead workouts, you know, like you do from high school on through the whole, your whole life. Um, and that's what gave me the bug, you know, as I realized, like, I am way out of shape, I am way like, I'm not the athlete I thought I was, and there's a totally different way to change. And um, there was a community there in the gym, the same way there's a community there, like within the cross and within the train hunt community, that mm -hmm. I think it was just an eye opener, you know, and I think people, if you're afraid to do something, which I think a lot of people, it's what holds you back from signing up for an event is you're just kind of mm -hmm. like, I don't want to be exposed and look like a little, you know, like a wimp or just suck. I mean, those are the things that are worth doing, you know, uh, mm -hmm. no one's going to laugh at you. No, everyone's going to pull you up and lift you up. And you're probably capable of way more than you think. But, uh, you know, what you walk away with that with and the type of direction motivation you get is just second to none. You can't really get that anywhere else. Well said. Well said. It's an ego free zone, buddy. Ego yeah, yeah. free zone. Just like every CrossFit gym is you better leave your ID ego at the door because <laughs> it, it's not, it may not come back with you or oh, it's going to no. be really wounded. So <laughs> yeah, it's going to be shattered. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's funny that, that it's, it's amazing that, uh, you went the other way, you yeah, know, it was the other like, way around. I, it's easy I was trained, I was CrossFit opposite. and then trained to hunt. Yeah. And then trained to hunt CrossFit. Well, and that's, that is, that is one of the, I think, common, common um target audiences that train to hunt has is that somebody who is maybe used to be and mm -hmm. somebody who like used to be a good athlete and they get afraid of being exposed of exposed and really being honest with themselves like that's i'm not that person anymore and they'd rather just in their head think oh i could probably still do that instead of going out and really proving it to themselves that they can or can't do it then you have the community that i really want to focus on that i that I haven't spent a lot of time focusing on in the past is that, and that's the, the community of people who are really just looking for another hunting season, you know, the 50, 50 plus, you know, 45 plus that are like, you know what? I, uh, I'm just looking for another hunting season. I will, I'm looking for some more mobility. 
I, I don't, I'm not necessarily looking to have these huge gains. I just want to be able to do this for the next five, 10, 20 years. And uh, that's really the biggest mind shift that I've had and why I've really started focusing on this, um, this target audience, which is what I call your, you know, your high mileage units, you know, the guys yeah, that have been yeah. out there beat, beating it since they were, you know, kids. And now they're, you know, 40, 50 years into their hunting career. And they're starting to really recognize and come to grips with the idea of um, I'm going to have to really work hard to be able to go hunt these same places that I've been hunting. Um, and, you know, being, I'm almost 50, my dad just turned 70 and he's my hunting partner and really, you know, that's what we're looking to do. Like my goal right now is to be as capable at 70 as I am now. And the only way to do that is to play the long game. You know, I'm not trying to set PRs anymore. I'm not trying to go out and set fire to the set fire to the road. I'm just trying to put myself in a position that when I'm 60, 70, 75 years old, I'm still as capable then as I am now, which is plenty capable to be able to do anything in, in the mountains. So that's, yeah. those are the guys that I want to talk to and the girls I want to talk to and, and the beginners, the people that don't know where to start, you know, they're, they're very similar in that you, you're, when you're playing the long game, um, that's what you got to do when you, you first start too is play the long game. Yeah. Yeah. You have to find out where you're at. And this is, this is kind of the, this is the spiel that I've been given people that are just starting out or people that are, you know, maybe your high mileage units is like, find out where you're at right now. Maybe you know where you're at, but um, what are you capable of doing? And then dial it back a little bit and then just do it more often. Because if you're doing it every day, there's no reason that you won't be able to, you wouldn't be able to continue to do that. Like if you're walking with weight on your back for say two miles a day, every day, well, there's no reason for you to ever lose the ability to walk with weight on your back. If you're doing it every day, if you mm -hmm. get on the ground and get up, if you, like, as simple as it may sound, you know, but I'm talking to like 65, 70, 75 year olds. If you can do one burpee every day, then why would you ever lose your ability to get off the ground? If you can do you know, a, a get up every day. If you can step up on a box and back down every day, why would you ever lose the ability to do those things? And so you have to keep it really simple. If right now where you're at is you're doing a half a mile walk and you're doing, you know, five push ups and five sit ups and five burpees and five, you know, get ups and five lunges, then great. Do it every day. If that's too much and it's real easy to know if it's too much because the next day you feel too sore and you're too worn out and you don't feel like doing it again. Um, then dial it back, then do less. Um, and, and do that for longer than you actually want to. That's my advice to people. It's like, once you find this, 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 uh, baseline, say it's just for right, you know, normal, not normal, but like the, the average person is going to be like, you know, 20 to 30 pounds, a mile to two miles, and then you're going to do, say, 20 push-ups, 20 sit-ups, 20 squats, 20 lunges, 20 burpees. Um, and you're going to do that every day. And after 15, 20 days, you're going to want, you're going to be like, I'm ready to dial it up. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to dial it up. Just relax. We're in this for a long, the long haul. We're running a marathon. So give yourself 30 days. After 30 days, bump it up just a little. Don't go twice as many, just bump it up a little bit. Cause when we're playing the long game, we have a long time to improve. And as humans, when psychologically, if we ever have to step back, it's really hard on us. You know, that's why people stop their physical fitness. Uh, that's why people stop training is because they go out of the gate so hot. They're I'm going to get in shape this time, damn it. And they go out there and they do too much. And the next day, they're so sore and maybe they push through that day. And then the third day comes and they're so sore. They're like, they're so tired that they make an excuse at any, at a whim. And then they're off the path again. And then they're, they're done. So mm -hmm. do less than you do less than you think, you know? And if you can, if you can get done with your workout and an hour later, you feel like I could do that again right now, that's probably good. You're probably perfect. That's probably right where you need to be. Do that for yeah. 30 days and then dial it up a little bit. Do that for 30 days, dial it up a little bit. 
Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. that consistency over intensity is, I mean, there's so much ego involved in that. It's like, there's just like yep. a, a battle of like one's mm-hmm. ego to help to resist, you know, what yep. you feel like you're capable of more today. It's, I think that's, that's such a, it's a tricky thing, but I, I mean, it's got to be a great formula. I like, I'm up in Flagstaff right now. We're living up here for the, the summer more or less. And uh, I joined the gym up here and we're at about 7,000 feet. And I didn't really have a choice of having to check my ego because like, even when I scale workouts and weights and everything, like the elevation that I'm getting used to is just like, man, just girls and like dudes that are not like they're running circles around me and I'm over here yeah. just, like sucking wind. <laughs> and yeah, it's been kind of tough to, to check my ego to like, look at a workout every day and just have a conversation with myself and be like, I want to be back. I want to come back tomorrow. I want to finish this workout and I want to do all these movements well. So this is where I got to be. And it's mm-hmm. been kind of tough. Like I've been kind of feeling that like, you know, Oh, I, I know I could do more, mm-hmm. but you know, I know that's not necessarily the, the route towards just the long haul, which is what I'm in it for too. And, and really what you're talking about. And the reason for that, Kevin is injury prone, right? Like, yeah. yeah, you could probably do that, but how, how many times could you actually do that before maybe you blow out a shoulder or, yeah. you know, or something. So when we're playing the long game as opposed to the ego game, um, which we, we all know we're all, we've all been there. Like in your, like, I don't know, maybe 14 to 30, all you care, like you just want to be the baddest man on the, in the gym and on the mountain. And you want to be as big as as strong and as fast as you possibly can. And as you get past 30, maybe into your forties, like that starts to kind of slowly leak away. And by the time you're, you know, in your late forties, fifties, you're, you know, more into it for the long haul. So like what I'm talking about, about being able to dial it back, be patient and play the long game. Like if you can find a 20 year old out there, that's willing to do that. Like that's a special person, man, because that's, (laughs) that's a hard thing to do. But, um, if you're in your twenties and you're a beginner, that's absolutely what you should do. You, I mean, that's, you know, we're airplanes here. That's what I, the other way I explain it is when you first start a fitness routine, like you got to think of yourself as an airplane, like you have to create some momentum and some consistency to get off, just get off the ground. You can't just go out there and say, okay, I'm going to jump right into the CrossFit world. I'm going to do everything rx and i don't care how bad it hurts i'll make my body adjust you know and just take off like a helicopter because it's going to come crashing right back down to earth whereas an airplane you get some momentum and you create you know 30 40 workouts of momentum and then you start lifting up and you lift off slow and you get that smooth takeoff and before you know it you're going to be at thirty thousand feet brother i mean but it takes time it's not a helicopter here so think of it in that way Chris is a great example of that, you know, I mean, Chris is much older than some of the guys we have at our gym that we do the Tuesday, Thursday workouts with, and he's doing like more work and more frequently than any of them. And yeah. it's, you know, that's just, I think that whole model of uh, consistency, which is the proofs in the pudding, like, yep, there it is. That's like, a cool part uh, that I look back on and I realized I was in better shape at 50 than I was at 40. Yeah, and, and mostly because I picked up, you know, I picked up trained to hunt and picked, you know, I just, it, it became important to me, you know, all of a sudden I realized I can't actually do this hunt. And I'm like, I'm, that's not going to work for me. I need to be able to do this. <laughs> and then I realized I'm 59 now, I'll be 60 in November. Uh, I'm still, you know, there's, there's not a hunt that I feel like I, is not, is beyond, you know, my, my ability, you know, it's, uh, you know, so, but to your point with a long game, okay, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm probably in better shape at 60 than I'm at set than I was at 50, but to think I'll be in better shape at 70 than 60, that's going to require some attention on my part. <laughs> so yeah, another level, you know, like you said, the long game, you know, it's the but, long and, game. Yeah. And, I, and that's fully my goal is to, to be a, at 70, to be where I'm at right now, at least, you know, yep. it's uh but anybody out there that thinks, you know, they're, they're when I was 45, about 45, I was 215 pounds and grossly out of shape, you know, I mean, just in terrible shape. And, you know, I've now I'm down to maybe it was like 172 this morning. And, uh, you know, so it, it, all that damage that you've done, you can reverse it, 
It, yes. It's just it's just a choice, and it's the long takes a long time, and uh, but you still got time. You know, at forty five, you still got time. You're not you know you're not that close to the grave yet. So no, no, no take no. advantage of it because life's a lot more fun. <laughs> it's Absolutely. just a lot more fun. And speaking of fun, that's one of the keys to being uh, being committed to the long game is you have to do things that are fun. You have to yeah. enjoy the journey because really when it comes down to it, that's all we got. All right. we got is the journey. We're going to have moments of success. We're going to have these times where we're going to feel like, wow, I'm glad that I've stayed in shape. But 95% of physical fitness is not going to be the reward. It's going to be the journey. And so mm -hmm. if you're out there, you know, Again, trying to figure out what should I do for cardio or what should I do where should I do to start? Well, start with something you like, or at least you don't hate it. So if you right. hate running, don't think, well, I'm gonna mm -hmm. have to run because Cameron Haynes runs or because these other people are running that or you know, that's what people do. That's not what everybody does. Like if you like to ride a bike, ride a bike. If you like to swim, swim. If you like to row, row. But find something that you like because if you don't like it, you're gonna quit. Like yeah. there's never been a case where somebody's like, I used to hate running so much. Maybe David Goggins, you know, but he's a <laughs> he's a different species. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, yeah. He doesn't um, count. Yeah, he doesn't count. If so, do something that's enjoyable. Do something that when you get that you look forward to, something that and then do it only enough that you feel like, wow, that was really fun. Because then you'll do it more often. And that's really the key to your point, Chris, is, is the, when you're playing a long game, do it all the time. And the only thing that you do all the time is something you're going to have fun doing. And that's one of, the, one of the cool things about the train to hunt workouts is that we all like shooting our bow. Man, I don't know yeah, a guy right. out there that's like, man, I hate shooting my bow. We all <laughs> like shooting our bow. Yeah. Well, shoot your bow during your workout. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool. I'm, I'm excited to see the, the train to hunt uh, fire take off again because that, yeah. that, that's what I always used to see so much of was like these guys older than me that were still running circles around me that I aspired to be. And I think that that group, it just there's a, there's a momentum there and there's a fire that starts to burn there. So I know it's going to take off again once you get some of those diehards back in and they'll drag a couple of their new buddies. And there's so many new people coming into this um, way of life, this hunter athlete lifestyle that, you know, I think it's going to be really cool to see where it goes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Hey guys, uh, I better jump off. Sure. I got a, yeah. I got another call I got to make, but man, of course. you guys, you were, you were like probably the first, guys that I thought of when I realized like I'm going to be able to come back is I was like, I can't wait to get back with, with wilderness athlete, the whole crew, you guys have such an amazing crew and the way you guys operate and the way that you like truly care about people and their, their journeys. And you're there to help is just, um, I really feel like since the, from the get go that our companies are really just so aligned so well that our customers are your customers. And if they're not, they should be. Yeah, and, uh, it will be. Say, and vice versa. So, um, well, I, I really appreciate that. you guys having me on, and I I, pre I look forward to catching up with you guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But real quick, what's the closest airport to the Oregon event? Where's it going to be held? It's going to be in Salem. So I think that there's a small airport in Salem, but Portland is probably about an hour and a half. All right, I got to so, get on Southwest Airlines and book yeah. my ticket. Get something. You got to do it, buddy, man. Oh, it's going to be. I just hope, I just hope everybody comes, you know, all the, all the staples, you know, including you, I'm, I'm, I, I'm stoked that you're going to come. So, um, yeah. yeah, we'll have fun. And, uh, yeah. guys, I appreciate you having me on Likewise. and I could, I, I could talk <laughs> fitness and, and, uh, health all day. So yeah, um, we'll have more appreciate conversations. It. We'll have you back on and we'll just stay in touch for sure. I want to, cool. you know, keep tabs on how everything's going. So super happy cool. for you. Super excited to see where it's going. So thanks for, cool. thanks for catching us up. You bet. Thanks, Ken. Take care, buddy. Talk to you soon. Take care, guys. All, All right. right. Bye. Bye.